Number 6. Living Gnome In 2008, a creepy gnome was caught on film in Argentina. Jose Alvarez, who filmed the gnome, reported that they caught the creature on film while larking about in their hometown of General Guaymes, Argentina. He stated, We were chatting about our last fishing trip. It was one in the morning. I began to film a bit with my mobile phone while the others were chatting and joking. Suddenly, we heard something. A weird noise as if someone was throwing stones. We looked to one side and saw that the grass was moving. To begin with, we thought it was a dog, but when we saw this gnome-like figure begin to emerge, we were really afraid. Other locals have since come forward to say that they have spotted the gnome, and the town has been covered in a pall of fear ever since the first sighting. Number 5. The Devil's Footprints on the night of February 9th, 1855, after a light snowfall, a series of hoof-like marks appeared in the snow. These footprints, measuring one and a half to two and a half inches wide and eight inches apart, continued throughout the countryside for a total of over 100 miles and, although veering at various points, for the greater part of their course followed straight lines. Houses, rivers, haystacks, and other obstacles were traveled straight over, and footprints appeared on the tops of snow-covered roofs and high walls which weigh in the footprints' path, as well as leading up to and exiting various drain pipes of as small as a 4-inch diameter. There were also rumors about sightings of a devil-like figure in the Devon area during the scare. Many townspeople armed themselves and attempted to track down the beast responsible without success. Recently, on the night of March 12, 2009, more strange marks, corresponding to those left in 1855, were found again in Devon. Number 4. Jeff In September 1931, the Irving family claimed to hear persistent scratching and rustling noises behind their farmhouse's wooden wall panels. At first, they thought it was a rat, but then the unseen creature began making different sounds, sometimes spitting like a ferret, or growling like a dog, or gurgling like a baby. The creature soon revealed an ability to speak, and introduced itself as Jeff, a mongoose. It claimed to have been born in New Delhi, India, in 1852. According to Vori, the daughter, who was the only person to see him properly, Jeff was the size of a small rat with yellowish fur and a large bushy tail, Jeff variously claimed to be an extra extra clever mongoose, an earthbound spirit, and a ghost in the form of a weasel. He once said, I am a freak, I have hands and I have feet, and if you saw me, you would faint. You'd be petrified, mummified, turned into stone or a pillar of salt. Vori Irving, who took Jeff under her wing, died in 2005. In an interview published late in life, she claimed that Jeff was not her creation. Number 3. James Warson On September 3, 1873, a man named James Warson had accepted a challenge to race in record time from the town of Leamington to the town of Coventry, a 20-mile trek. He had been boasting of his foot skills and then was asked to prove them, so with sporting good spirits, he set about to do just that. Two friends, Hammerson Burns and Barham Wise, followed behind in a horse-drawn carriage. Burns brought along his camera. Warson was never out of their sight, and would often turn around while running to exchange some friendly words with the two riders. Running in the middle of the road, Warson suddenly appeared to stumble and pitch forward, having time enough for only one short, piercing scream. Wise later said, it was the most ghastly sound either of us have ever heard. But as Warson pitched forward with that terrible cry, instead of falling to the ground as he appeared to be about to have done, he completely and totally vanished in mid-fall before ever striking the ground. The road itself told the story and Wise took the pictures to prove it. There in the soft dirt were Warson's footprints. They led down the middle of the road, looked as if the runner stumbled, and there they disappeared. A search was called and the locals scoured the area for James. The bloodhounds used in the search were strangely reluctant to approach the spot where Warson disappeared. He was never seen or heard from again. 
Number 2. August 7th, 1973 will remain a day of mystery and possible tragedy. Several people in New Mexico that day, using CB radios, heard the disturbing cries for help from a little boy. He said his name was Larry and that he was trapped in a red and white pickup truck. He was with his father who he thinks had a heart attack and was dead. He said that they had been on a rabid hunting trip when his father collapsed on the steering wheel. Larry claimed that the truck had flipped over into a ravine and both doors were jammed shut and he was unable to escape. The boy's signal faded in and out over the next few days and was also heard in California, Wyoming, and Arizona. In a panic, Larry began to flip between channels crying for help. Police began a search and rescue team. One helicopter pilot who was searching the Manzano Mountains in New Mexico for Larry says that he made contact with a little boy calling for help, but he called himself David, not Larry. A family traveling from Missouri was reported missing on August 11th, and they had a son named Larry, but they were eventually found. On August 12th, an army sergeant claimed to have spoken to the boy for three hours, but could not get him to give more information about himself, like his phone number or address, etc. No more contacts could be made with Larry. It is presumed his battery died. The search was called off on August 13th. The police stated that there was no concrete evidence. They also say that the boy, if real, may have died sooner than the transmission stopped, and that the subsequent transmissions from different states, some were even heard in Canada, were hoaxes. Many believe it was a hoax, but those who spoke to Larry swear to this day that it wasn't that the emotion and the crying they heard from little Larry was no doubt the real thing. Number 1. On November 29, 1970, a professor and his daughters were hiking in the Isdalen Valley in Norway when they came across the partially charred remains of a young woman. She was surrounded by a large quantity of sleeping pills and bottles of gasoline. All the clothing she was wearing had the tags removed and her fingerprints had been sanded off. A dental screening was done, and some of her dental work was done using techniques only found in Latin America. She was eventually traced back to two suitcases at the NSB train station in Bergen. Her luggage contained a prescription lotion with the doctor's name removed, and a few pieces of broken glass with partial fingerprints, and 500 German marks, which is the equivalent of 350 US dollars, under the lining of one of the suitcases. They discovered the woman had traveled by train across Europe under nine different names. There were diaries found with her things that contained cryptic notes that the police deciphered were codes listing the places that she had been. Witnesses say she wore wigs as she traveled and spoke several languages such as French, German, English, and Dutch. She stayed at several hotels in Bergen. After checking into each, she would change rooms several times, always requiring a balcony, and would always order porridge with milk for room service. A local man came to the police saying that five days prior to the body's discovery, he came across a very elegant woman while hiking. He noted that she wasn't dressed for being outdoors, much less on a remote hiking trail, and that her face was distorted with fear. He claimed that she attempted to mouth something to him but was followed closely by two large men in black coats. The man waited 32 years to come public with this story, stating that when he contacted the police, the officer who answered told him, forget her, she was dispatched. The case will never be solved. <laughs>